All right. I get off asked quite often about this calculation of water, um, water hardness lab, and specifically the calculations involving data table number two. Let me walk you through what they've done here. Um, first of all, this is what you're solving for, right? Your moles of calcium per liter. So in other words, you're solving for your molarity of your calcium. In order to do that, you have to take your liters of EDTA. This is what you determined in the experiment. This is what you determine in the experiment, the volume used. And let's see here. And not an unreasonable amount would be, let's say you used 2.9 milliliters so that would give you a volume in liters of 0 0.0290 liters. Next thing you're doing is you're multiplying by your moles of EDTA per liter. And this is the thing people have the most trouble with because the lab says it once during the materials section of your lab. This is a given to you. Your concentration of your EDTA is 0 0.010 molarity or moles of EDTA per liter. That's a given. That's what you find in the lab. Um, Right, that was a given to you. And it'll be the same for everybody, right? So we've got that 0 0.29. And I better not see like everybody in the lecture, uh, everybody in the lab section turning in 2.90, right? I pulled that number from thin air, people. Um, every one of you are using different tap, tap water, so you're going to have different amounts. And then you're multiplying it by your 0 0.010 moles. Of EDTA per one liter. The next thing that they've done here is they decided to confuse you completely. What they've done is they've switched from moles of EDTA to moles of calcium. And they're referring to the chemical reaction between the two in which they react in a one-to-one -one ratio. One mole of calcium, two plus, reacts with one mole EDTA. So you're multiplying and dividing by one to change out basically your units here, right? You're, you're getting rid of those units, canceling those moles of EDTAs out and replacing them with moles of calcium. So all you'd really be doing here is one mole of calcium per one mole of EDTA. And that's from your chemical reaction that they gave you in your introduction and they walked you through there. Then what are they doing? Well, if you follow your units up to this point, you've gotten rid of liters, you've gotten rid of EDTAs and we have moles of calcium. And we're wanting what units? These units up here of moles of calcium per liter. So the last step is going to involve dividing by 
the volume of water. And since the instructions told you to use 10 milliliters, everybody in the classroom is going to have the same answer here, where you're dividing by that 10 milliliters. And 10 milliliters of water translates into 0 0.010 liters. Whoops, I keep my colors the same water. So that winds up with us having units of calcium over liters water, which is what we're looking for here, because moles per liter is molarity. To make it really simple here, and you're saying, yes, please do. To make it really simple here, This is the same for everybody. So what you're really doing is you're calculating your moles of calcium per liter by taking the volume of EDTA used in the experiment in units of liters then you're going to multiply by 0 0.010 and then you're going to divide by 0 0.01 liters. This easy formula is to get you through lab. You need to be able to understand what you are doing and why, however, in order to survive lecture. Now, I'm not sure where you are. This is one of those things about asynchronous classes that can be difficult. Um, currently, I'm not teaching molarity until towards the end of the class. It's, in, it's at the end of chapter six. So you may be running a little ahead of where we are in lecture. Um, but if you don't have me for lecture A, shame on you. And then um, B, hopefully you'll eventually get to molarity um, in your chemistry lecture. That's it. Beep.